Greetings and welcome to this first Sunday of Christmas virtual worship service for Church of the Master Presbyterian Church USA located in Atlanta, Georgia. I am the Reverend Dr. Cecilia Taylor, pastor of this very fine congregation, and I'm so very happy that you've chosen to join with us for this Christmas tide worship. Our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God from the heavens, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let us praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted above the earth and heaven. Let us worship God. Pray with me, please. Eternal God, you have clothed your people with the garments of salvation and covered them with the robe of righteousness. As we enter this time of worship, we praise your name for gifts of grace and of mercy, large and small. As we sing hymns of thanksgiving and pray prayers that give voice to our innermost thoughts, pray your presence with us and in us. Mercifully let our worship be pleasing in your sight. It is in the name of the risen Christ that we pray. Amen. call to confession. Jesus came into an indifferent world, yet his life revealed the inner thoughts of many. Let us now confess our sins before God that we might receive forgiveness for our sins. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not lived as your faithful children. We have kept silent in midst of prejudice and hatred. We have been idle in the face of violence and injustice. We have not been a light to the nations, and our lives have not revealed your glory. Forgive us, merciful God. Repair the ugliness of our sin and restore in us your beautiful grace. In the Savior's name we pray, amen. Beloved, 
Hear the good news, and it is good news. Our loving God covers us with the robe of righteousness, grace, and mercy. As God's beloved, know this to be true. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you are, I am, we are forgiven. Now go and do likewise and be at peace. We turn now to the word proclaimed portion of our worship service. Here now, our prayer of illumination. Merciful God, as you led Simeon to embrace the infant Jesus, guide us, Holy Spirit, by your gracious light that we may welcome your saving word. Amen. Amen. Our first reading on this first Sunday of Christmas comes from the Psalter. It is Psalm 148 in its entirety. Listen now to the words of the psalmist. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Thus ends our first reading. The New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. It is the King James Version. Listen to the word of the Lord. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses, were accomplished. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and that same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit unto the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of law, then took him, then he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, thou lettest thou servant depart in peace according to thy word. For thine eyes have seen thy salvation, which Thou hast prepared before the face of all the people a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. 
And Joseph and his mother reveled in those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them, and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the, f the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And there, in that one Anna, prophetess, daughter of Nathanael, of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, and had lived and husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God from the with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned unto Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew, and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Greetings and good morning. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. This morning, I'd like to take a moment to talk about praising God. Let's praise him, which is mentioned repeatedly in Psalm 148. As we celebrate Christmas and enjoy our gifts and time with family, let's not forget about all the things that God has done for us. This year has been very challenging, but we have so much to be thankful for. You may wonder, how can we praise God? Good question. One way you can do it is by simply doing your very best at home, at school, at church, and in your community. Just being the best person that you can be is an excellent way of praising God. Also, another way of praising God is prayer. Praying is a fantastic thing that each and every one of us can do. There are so many adults and children in the world that can benefit just from you saying a simple prayer, giving them the hope and strength and courage that they may need to get through the things that they're going through during this COVID pandemic. These are all excellent ways that each and every one of us can praise his holy name. We all have so much to be thankful for. And during this wonderful season, I want you all to keep that in mind as you continue to fellowship and spend time with family and friends and enjoy your gifts and toys. Let's not forget about those who may be experiencing some tough times. So say a simple prayer. Do your very best each and every day. These are all ways that we can all praise his holy name. All right, let's take a moment and close with prayer. Dear Almighty God, we come to you today humbled and encouraged. We know that even during this pandemic, you're still in the healing business. Help us to stay strong and keep the faith so that we can continue to be doers in your word. These things and more we ask in your namesake. Amen. Good morning. Pray with me, please. Father God, we come to you this morning, this last Sunday of the year, grateful and thankful. Thankful for our health, thankful for our family, friends, and loved ones. And thankful and grateful that we're able to see this year come to a close. As we look back, we may be saddened by some of our losses but we are humbled by our blessings. 
Continue to be with us, Father, to protect and cover us. Continue to bless us that we may be a blessing to others. And as we look forward to the coming year, continue to be with us, Lord, our family, our friends. Continue to be with this church and this congregation. Continue to be with us as we try to help heal and keep our community together. Now, let us pray the prayer that God taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Good day, Church of the Master family. I hope your holiday seasons are going superbly. I'm honored to spend a few moments with y'all during the last service of our 2020 calendar year to talk to you about the amazing Word of God. I send a special appreciation to you all for your resilience during a tough year. In the midst of everything that has happened to us, we are still standing as joyful, buoyant messengers of God's greatness. God is the great teacher, and for that, God is ever merciful. Let us dive directly into matters. My homily this moment derives from the gospel text of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. For the sake of brevity, I will not read it all again, but I want us I want to reference it, and I'm going to start at verse um, 28. So please allow me for a brief second to indulge. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Skipping to verse 38. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child, she being the prophet Anna. She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. For the next bits of time, I'm going to talk about the importance of expanding in strength, wisdom, and grace as we move into the upcoming 2021 New Year and beyond. Ultimately, I want to give some action steps to help us immediately apply so that we can develop an ever-deepening relationship with Christ so that our lives can be more fulfilling and more helpful to those around us. Pray with me. God, let the words out of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Throughout this past year, I have encountered many words that have helped me to make sense of the multitude of information that's come my way. And I want to condense it into the three topics, aforementioned topics of strength, wisdom, and grace that hopefully serves as a guide of sorts um, to help make sense of the information that you come across or that you have come across. Strength, wisdom, grace, the three levers upon which we stand. When we talk about strength, Strength is largely dependent on a facility to control. To be strong in our walk with God, we have to control our gait. That's to say we have to keep walking when many factors come our way, encourage us to stop. This is known by many as keeping the faith, keeping the main thing, the main thing. A wise person once told me that to keep walking the walk, it is critical that we avoid being sucked into other people's ideas of success. Avoid putting others on pedestals. So when we examine others, center on the gifts that they offer and how it can aid in our own construction. Only then can we harvest our deepest individual potential and only then can we continue to be strong in our walk. Because when we understand that our walk is dependent on our ability to recognize God's gifts within us, we'd be less likely to stumble. Um, I often see people 
who start off on a path, but when they start looking left or looking right, start comparing, their walk becomes less sure. So I want us to encourage us to go forward, to give ourselves a checklist to ensure that we are in line with our God-given attributes so that we can continue to walk strongly with God. Three questions that we can ask ourselves. What do I do well? What can I do every day to get better at that skill? How can I provide value to others through this skill? Growing strong is a requisite in our journeys because there will be forces. There will be things that happen to throw us off course. We have to know this and we have to plan to counter it. Strength is what allows us to compensate for the vicissitudes of life. Wisdom is the know-how, the skill set, if you will. It is written in the Bible that the fear of the Lord is where wisdom begins. Another way of saying this is that for one to be truly, for one to be truly wise, one has to understand their place in relationship to the divine. We are vessels to be used for God's purpose. We use strength to keep our vessels usable, but it is wisdom that allows for effective function in our daily lives. Therefore, it is the height of wisdom to seek to develop a depth of relationship to Christ daily. We have to recognize that there are myriad ways to do this, but the two pillars for this to occur relies on self-reflection and service. One cannot and I challenge anybody to counter me on this if you feel like I am wrong. But one cannot be in lockstep with Christ without regular periods of self-reflection and loving service. If we are not doing internal inventory daily, we will fall behind on the scoreboard. As the entrance to the Temple of Delphi says, know thyself. Or as Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within. If we don't seek to go within daily, we will fall behind on the scoreboard. Extending this analogy, we can say that self-reflection is defense and loving service is offense. And a regular regimen of both will surely bring us into a deeper relationship with Christ. And thirdly, how do we grow in grace? We grow in grace by emphasizing gratitude. Who are we truly appreciative of? Who are we loyal to? Who has prophesied to us? Who has poured into us? And how do we feel? How, what is our relationship to that person and to that energy? This is how favor is activated. Favor is activated by being grateful for the things that you already have. Favor isn't something that just shuts off. Even though it can seem hidden at times, it is never out the picture. Understanding is what keeping is what keeps this fountain alive. We must be forever attached to our understanding of what God has given us to make us grow. Nobody is perfect. Mistakes will be made. But our vigilance for betterment has to remain undiminished. Gratitude is the key to unlocking God's favor. So in closing, I just want to leave you with this. If, if whatever you encounter, if it does not build up, hype up, or pipe up your Christ self, your immortal self, the God within, then it should not be around. It should not be a regular part of our existence. We must be very committal about these matters. What we dwell on in our thoughts settles and coagulates, forming solid stones that weighs down the spirit. When we hold on to sorrows, whether real or imagined, we densify our existence. But the spirit is always here to make things right. And this is what we have to understand. The spirit is it's, it's a personal trainer, always ready to guide us through our next set of exercises, one rep at a time. But do we listen to our trainer? 
If not, no problem. The Spirit is a ceaseless teacher, representing the lesson tirelessly because it is trapped by its own compassion. Or perhaps better stated, the Holy Spirit is liberated by its own compassion. Going into the 2021 Gregorian calendar new year, I hope that we all allow the ceaseless teacher to have its way with our spirits so that we can grow in strength, wisdom, and grace. We will encounter successes, failures, joys, sorrows, wins, and buoys, but we will, by the unencumbered spirit of God, remain strong in our walks, wise in how we move, and ever merciful in our acts. Amen. We turn now to the service of giving for this Lord's Day. Once again, for your attention, you need to know that the Presbytery has informed us that our 2020 per capita of $26.95 is due. All members, please remember to add that $26.95, your per capita. Please add it to your tithes and offerings. Brothers and sisters, as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. With thankful hearts, let us offer ourselves our time and treasure. Let us offer them as gifts to our God. We thank you so very much for your generosity to this church and its ministry. Pray with me, please. 
Jesus. Loving God, we give you thanks for the light of the world, Jesus Christ. We dedicate now our gifts of time, talent, and treasure to your work and your ministry in this world. May all that we do give glory and honor to your name. It is in the name of the risen Christ that we pray. Amen. We turn now to our church concerns for this final Sunday in the year 2020. Thanks to all who have participated in the Pandemic Prayer Line Ministry. This ministry led by Elders Cheryl Hibbler and James Barringer has a faithful following. The weekly numbers are consistently high. Many say they look forward to this daily time of fellowship. In this new year, please join this group Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Prayer does change things. Now, as we look at our healing and recovering list, we note that many folks have benefited greatly from your prayer for they have been healed their lives have improved we ask now that you especially pray for Jacqueline early as she goes through a challenging time and pray for Clavon McNeil the mother of Deacon Sheila Meadows also pray for Elder Brooksy Cunningham of our Bible study group, along with all the others listed and known to you. Finally, please pray for Elder Kendra Matthews as she mourns the death of her aunt, Mrs. Bertha Smith. As we close, I want to thank our worship leaders, Zettler Clay the Fourth, who has served as preacher and liturgist since the beginning of this pandemic. God is doing something special with this young man. So please keep him in your prayers. We'd also like to thank Elder Anthony Meadows, who week in and week out has compiled our contributions and produced a wonderful virtual worship service. Thank you for sharing your gifts, Elder Matthew. We'd like to thank Elder Katrina Thomas of Trinity Presbyterian Church in Decatur, who came on midway through the pandemic and weekly provides media support to me and Elder Matt Meadows. Sheila Weed and S. Renee Clark have lent their considerable talents by week in and week out, providing the beautiful music that you hear each week. I know sometimes it sounds like an orchestra, a jazz combo. It may sound like a full choir or a trio, but it's just those two doing what they do. Their ministry has blessed us tremendously. I want to especially thank Liam Fields, Brendan Michael, and William Trice and their parents for their participation. The reading of the scripture by these young boys has a powerful impact on our worship experience. May God continue to bless them as they grow in faith and in their knowledge of our triumph God. To all our Time for Children leaders, Shanika Clay, Lauren and Nicholas Barringer, Kendra Matthews, Courtney Trice, thank you for your creativity, leadership, and dedication. And to all who have contributed by offering the prayers of the people, Deacon Barbara Barringer, Elder James Barringer, Elder Kendra Matthews, Elder Craig Costin, Elder Cheryl Hibbler, others. Thanks for your willingness to serve. We close again by saying Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, and may you find and keep your peace in this year to come. 
Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Until we gather again in this virtual place, I am the Reverend Dr. Cecilia A. Taylor, pastor of Church of the Master Presbyterian Church USA located in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for worshiping with us, and we'll see you soon.